so it is actually for you uh, the pg residents it's uh, you are really uh, uh, lucky to have a speaker like uh, a teacher like dr sanish uh, like to teach on these equipments and vaporizers because i as a pg student experienced that and uh, from my experience and my uh, like memories i am saying that so please uh, utilize this uh, uh, situation and over to sanish sir Okay, good evening, everybody. Actually, we are uh, starting on time today because um, we have miles to go before we stop today. Hmm? Okay, um, it's a weekend. Happy weekend. Uh, we'll be having a discussion on modern vaporizers. We'll um, start from where we left last Saturday by uh, Dr. Babraj on historical history of vaporizers and the physical principles. Okay, I would like to have uh, uh, volunteers for a discussion so that uh, rather than a monologue, I can, we can have a discussion. So we'll discuss along and whoever is willing for uh, this interactive discussion can volunteer now. So right from beginning, we'll incorporate um, your uh, inputs and also others can put your comments on the chat box. We are watching that also. Okay, so to begin with uh, something on our uh, pre-test and even the last week's pre-test answers, we were not happy with the statistics. Okay, maybe because there is a famous saying about this topic vaporizers that uh, this topic is uh, a vaporizing topic. You study, you believe you know, but after some time you tend to get confused. So luckily for the first question, there is not much of confusion. Identify the vaporizer working via bubble through uh, principle, tech seven, penlon, vapor 19.1, tech six, copper kettle, 87% went with copper kettle. We'll discuss the answers a little later. Which of these vaporizers work with the manual temperature compensation? Tech six, dragger vapor 2000, EMO, copper kettle vaporizer, Interestingly, 7% said Aladdin cassette has uh, manual temperature compensation. Okay, what is the thermal compensation method in tech six vaporizer for desflurane? Bimetallic strip, nobody told either Phil Bellows, we are happy. Supplied heat, 61%. Manual thermal compensation, mercury expansion devices, just 2%. Fourth question, all of the following vaporizers are tippable. You know what is tipping? You can turn during transportation. Even if you tip or tilt it a little bit, there is no issue of uh, liquid vapor, liquid agent getting into the vaporizing chamber, uh, the bypass chamber. So tippable except GE Aladdin, 39% went for that. I think um, this, these people didn't get what is um, Aladdin vaporizer. Dragger vapor 2000, tech five, tech six, 36% went with the right answer, boils bottle. Maximum dial setting in tech six vaporizer. The response was uh, very much interesting because only 53% knew it is 18%. So almost one third believe it's 12%. So we have to clarify these points uh, in today's session. So can I have some volunteers? I think there are uh, very enthusiastic people attending this. Yeah, please raise your hand uh, yeah. because it's a golden opportunity. And again, the attendees' yeah. uh, numbers are also have uh, increased. So Naveen, uh, Naveen can talk. Yeah. Any, who else? Mohan, yeah. yes. Dr. Mohan. Two more. Two more. Two more, please. Come on. It's just about uh, speaking along with me. Okay. Nothing much. Yes, sir. I'm not going to put you in trouble asking questions and all. Only Naveen and Mohan are two more persons we want. Otherwise, I'll randomly pick <laughs> SB. So SB will have to tell your name. Okay. SB, can you talk? One more person. One more person, please. Please unmute and talk. SB, the one whom I have promoted now. Yeah, please talk. Your name. My name is Dr. Sai Balaji. Sai Balaji. Sai okay. Balaji. Okay. Yes, okay. Sai Balaji. Okay. Fine. Uh, yeah. What, what, Postgraduate. Dr. Sai Balaji. Yes, sir. Finally, a postgraduate student sir, from Bharti Vidyapit, Pune. Okay, okay, fine. How about uh, Dr. Mohan? 
Dr. Mohan from a fine layer PG from Banaras in the university. Okay, fine. The fourth one. Naveen. Uh, sir, I am from Seven uh, uh, Air Force Hospital, Kanpur. Okay, which DNB, year? DNB, sir. Okay, which year? I missed my one uh, practical attempt. So I am doing. Uh, I'm going to give second attempt. Oh, fine. Okay, Dr. Rajoy from Assam Medical College, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, your first year, no? Yes, second year. Second year. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Um, so I'll uh, address the topic to you, so you can respond. Um, as of now, you can keep your mic muted. Okay. One point is uh, you can press the space bar and speak. Okay. Only when you press the space bar, you will be unmuted. Fine. Got it. Fine. So with uh, tributes to. our uh, historical equipments uh, this is a picture from <clears throat> kmc mangalore museum we had the historical equipments most of these equipments will jump out when uh, we are setting the table for the exam viva okay so throughout our post graduation we would be seeing this but we will never go and take this or uh, check the features but uh, during exam you will come to know because this equipment was um, around and uh, you never bothered to check it out but your examiner will be fond of it okay so our anesthesia history as such is a short one uh, volatile agents used started from ether there was an era when we uh, thought we are in a golden era of uh, serfluorine then aladdin cassette web presses came now the divas are coming direct injection of vapor anesthetics are coming again this anesthetics are uh, going to icu also so that is the change so many of us believe that it's not my cup of tea this topic is not my cup of tea why because what happens in tea a hot tea imagine there is vaporization happening right then only you are getting the vapors of tea and you smell it okay after some time the vapors take away heat from the tea the tea starts cooling now you won't get the order okay taste also differs so our objective of today's discussion is we'll be discussing some exam oriented points on how to identify the vaporizers for that we need to revise the classification of vaporizers individual vaporizers we'll discuss from tech 5 onwards we'll discuss the physical principles behind temperature compensation methods some safety features in vaporizers like interlocking methods and we'll touch upon aladdin vaporizer direct injection of vapor anesthetic diva and anaconda okay agreed fine um, so can uh, one of the delegates uh, tell me what do you mean by vapor dr sai balaji nothing much i know this is physics and this is just for warming up Dr. Sai Balaji, you want to attempt what is a vapor? Vapor is a substance that is in gaseous phase, sir. Okay. Uh, below its critical temperature. Exactly. Okay, fine. So you don't call oxygen a vapor, right? Okay. Gaseous phase of a substance below its critical temperature is called vapor. Excellent answer. Okay. So we start off on a fine note, and can you explain me what is critical temperature? because i think you almost mentioned it also so critical temperature is the temperature uh, above which gaseous material cannot be condensed into a liquid excellent excellent for those who are uh, new to this concept uh, some substances ex uh, exist in gaseous phase and liquid phase okay the change over is called evaporation liquid evaporates into gaseous phase but as temperature goes increases beyond a particular point how much ever pressure you increase you cannot compress it into liquid that is called critical point so i think it's clear for everybody listening to this okay critical point is the point above which how much ever pressure you rise you cannot bring down the gaseous phase into liquid phase some examples water at 374 degrees beyond that there is no water it's only vapor okay 
nitrous oxide 36.5 carbon dioxide 31.2 oxygen minus 119 degrees celsius okay so now next query is i think dr sai balaji will be uh, pumping to answer and uh, you know after liquid phase it will go into a solid phase and solid to gas gaseous conversion is called sublimation and solid melts into liquid phase and this particular point where all the three phases can coexist gaseous liquid and solid phase what is it called sai balaji no okay anybody else in the panel dr mohan dr navin dr rajoy no idea sir okay no fine idea. so three phases coexisting is called triple point okay so these are the why why questions you will get this question you punch in the answer that's it okay no more wasting time so it's a, um, that particular temperature is important we mentioned it as t3 that pressure that particular pressure is mentioned as p3 okay clear so we know what is critical point what is triple point this is just a warm up before going into vaporizer and what is vaporizer dr mohan hi sir yeah um, what is your concept regarding the vaporizer the equipment called vaporizer sir uh, vaporizer uh, uh, is an equipment which is used to uh, con uh, which is used to deliver the anesthetic gas at a desired uh, concentration okay so that it, point it is converts. important so something that is equipment designed to facilitate a change in liquid anesthetic into its vapor, vapor and add a controlled amount of this vapor into fresh gas flow or the breathing system okay so that control is what makes vaporizer a medical instrument or equipment fine so now we know there are different instruments used from history to the present era we have been developing or evolving to make it more precise controllable and to avoid mishaps due to the equipment so some physical properties i am not going into the detail because last session we have uh, dealt with all this in what is vapor pressure boiling point this these definitions should uh, rush through your mind what is partial pressure volumes percent heat of vaporization specific heat thermal conductivity because if we start discussing these things we won't finish in time okay so uh, who is going to help me with the next phase which is very important for an exam point of view classification of vaporizers because i'll put the slide and we'll speak along uh, dr mohan hi yes sir yeah okay so there are i put the six different classifications of vaporizers okay, okay sir so watch out for this area because this will be there for some time okay especially yes, when you are describing a vaporizer uh, one exam tip is you get a vaporizer you start thinking about this classification and uh, designate which all terms you can coin so you will be giving at least seven or eight points from the classification itself okay after seeing say tech seven vaporizer you speak seven points straight away so that uh, the examiner will get an impression that you know something about the equipment rather than going into some details and getting into further discussions so vaporization methods the classification is flow over bubble through flow over or bubble through an injection type okay flow over means the carrier gas flows over the liquid vapor and then takes the uh, vapor molecules in gaseous phase and joins the bypass bubble through the carrier gas bubbles through the liquid and takes more uh, vapor molecules and joins back the circuit flow over bu bubble through you know i it can work in either way and injection type so um, can you name some examples of flow over vaporizers flow over is uh, uh, tech tech six uh, tech six vaporizers tech vaporizers are flow over flow over yeah okay penlon vapor 19.1 okay these are flow over with Gold. leaks 
Okay, Goldman is without wicks. So in there is a sub classification: flow over with wicks and without wicks. Okay, how does wicks help? Increase the surface area of okay. contact. So the carrier gas uh, contact area will increase, and we'll have more of saturated uh, carrier gas going out to the mixing chamber. Okay, so these are the examples: tech vaporizers, Penlon, vapor 19.1, and vapor 2000. These are with wicks, without wicks, gold man. Example of a bubble through vaporizer. Copper kettle, sir. Copper kettle vaporizer. Okay, excellent. Boils bottle. Flow over or bubbles through. Bubble through. Yeah. Last time, last time we have discussed when we depress the cowl, then it becomes a bubble, bubble through. Otherwise, it's a flow over. Flow over. Yes. Okay. Fine. Injection type of vaporizer. Macquart injection type. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Simmons. When our uh, desflurane is uh, injection type, okay. Mm. The Tech Six vaporizer is an injection Simmons. type. Simmons. Simmons. Simmons vaporizer. Yes, it's an injection type. So it, anaconda. It, anaconda. Uh, very difficult to classify it specifically because that's a different category on its own. Okay, it's a kind of injection type, but uh, the method is slightly different. We need to discuss some more on anaconda. Okay. For okay. general purpose, we keep this classification: flow over, bubble through, flow over or bubble through, and injection type. Okay, fine, clear. So now, how do you regulate the vapor output? So here is the classification: either it's a variable bypass or measured flow. Okay, within variable bypass. Variable bypass with the fully saturated vapor chamber and variable bypass with the variably saturated vapor chamber. Can you give some examples? Fully saturated vapor chambers. All our new generation precision vaporizers are uh, having this. So, mechanically uh, devices like uh, tech vaporizers, Penlon vaporizers. And our electronically controlled GE Aladdin, okay, Aladdin cassette gives out fully saturated vapor. Got it? Yes, But when it yes, comes sir. to Goldman's and Boyle's bottle, it may not. It's not guaranteed that uh, from vaporizing chamber fully saturated vapor is going out. So it's variable depending on the flow rate, temperature drop, and all. It can happen. So it's not assured. In our modern uh, precision vaporizers, it's a Fully saturated vapor coming out of the vaporizing chamber. Okay, so this is the classification and measured flow. You know, it's copper kettle. Clear? So our second classification is method of regulating output uh, concentration. This is variable bypass and measured flow within variable bypass, fully saturated or variably saturated vapor chamber. Is so clear? So this is an interesting thing. Uh, this. Uh, takes two slides temperature compensation okay either it is automatic thermal compensation or supplied heat manual thermal compensation or no compensation okay so we are coming down the ladder automatic thermal compensation supplied heat manual thermal compensation no thermal compensation okay examples of automatic thermal compensation Tech six, tech six is supplied heat. Supplied heat. Okay, all other techs. If you are thinking about tech five, tech seven, there is a bimetallic strip made of bronze and nickel. We'll come. I will uh, check where, how it works. Vapor nineteen point one. There is a metal rod. Due to expansion or contraction, it goes up and down and regulates the bypass chamber. EMO has either filled bellows. Because last uh, session we have shown the EMO vaporizer and how the ether fill bellows are placed inside the liquid agent. Penlon has fluid fill bellows, mercury expansion devices. So these are the automatic thermal compensation. As the liquid cools off, there is some changes happening. So less of um, gas escapes through the vaporizer bypass. So more gas is directed towards the vaporizing chamber and takes vapor. Okay, so that's the idea. We'll see the graphics a little later. Supplied heat is tech six. Desflurane is electrically heated, so we are heating the agent to thirty-nine degrees 
and proceeding proceeding with the vaporization okay so now the second part of thermal compensation manual thermal compensation where do you get the manual thermal compensation any guess Go. Copper Gold kettle. Man. No, no. Copper Gold kettle. Man. Copper Gold kettle. Man. There is a chart depending on the temperature. How much measured flow should go in? Okay. As the temperature falls, you have to drive in more uh, carrier gas to the copper kettle vaporizer. Okay. So that is the kind of manual thermal compensation, so that the anesthetist should be manually adjusting the flow rates. And there are uh, vaporizers with non thermal compensation. The historical ones: Boyle's bottle, Goldman's. and siemens and electronic thermal compensation is the most precise one which is software controlled computer controlled it's aladdin vaporizer we'll see okay so what all things we discuss thermal compensation visible automatic mm -hmm. thermal compensation you know the tech accepted tech 6 um vapor 19.1 emo penlon vaporizer supplied heat is tech 6 manual thermal compensation happens with the copper kettle and some of the earlier dragger vapors vaporizers for uh, halothane no thermal compensation with boyle's bottle goldmans electronic thermal compensation happens with aladdin so next one is agent specificity okay how how do we classify agent specificity either it is agent specific agent or multi agent or multi agent so which are the agent specific ones this fluorine tech six vaporizer tech six tech seven yes. even aladdin's penlon mm -hmm. all these are agent specific because we cannot fill isofluorine in a halothane vaporizer that's yes. it multiple agent goldman boyle's bottle boyle's. and all you can whichever you are putting because there is no restriction you have to have vigilance to make sure that you are filling according to the designated one now this uh we usually discuss plenum or draw over okay we'll discuss slightly in detail what's your idea about plenum vaporizer you have to uh, give a positive pressure uh, so okay. that uh, the gases will take the vapor sir okay so carrier I mean, gas is pushed into the vaporizer with some positive pressure and then yes. the carrier gas takes away the vapor molecules and goes to goes downstream okay so, will be discussing that so our tech vaporizers penlon vaporizers and all it is plenum vaporizer how about draw over vaporizer the fresh gas is the atmosphere pressure is push over through the vaporizer pardon sir fresh the, gas at a, at atmosphere pressure is push over through the vaporizer draw over here uh, through the draw over, draw over or plenum dr jay Sir, if fresh gas at an atmospheric pressure, we will uh, draw over to the vaporizer, drawn to the vaporizer. Okay, I will show the graphics. Draw over basically, it's like our uh, spontaneous breathing. We are creating a negative pressure and draws air in during our normal breathing. No, okay. so similarly, in the downstream, we are generating a negative pressure and pulls the vapor. Okay, in the. Uh, first one plenum vaporizer there is a positive pressure only when there is a pressure gradient there will be a flow of gas okay either you give positive pressure upstream or give slightly negative pressure downstream are you getting it i I'll, i'll show the slides okay depending on where the vaporizer is located out of circuit and in circuit vaporizers can you give an example of a vaporizer out of circuit all the tech six vaporizer all, are uh, all the plenum vaporizers plenum all the plenum vaporizers, vaporizers. are uh, out mm. of circuit okay in circuit uh, draw over uh, vaporizers sir so, goldman okay goldman g e o goldman emo and uh, ome i think today our uh, chat box is very quiet and um, i think apart from the panelists you can keep putting in your answers and queries we will be watching for that also so this is a classification okay so when you have this classification in mind when you get a equipment for viva at least you place their equipment in these categories and you can speak out at least 6 7 points about that particular equipment okay 
So this is vaporizer out of circuit. This is what happens with most of our presently used uh, tech vaporizers and all. Okay, fresh gas flow, manifold, vaporizer, and it joins the circuit. That is placed out of the circuit. Here it is like uh, OMV, Goldman's, EMO vaporizer. This is part of the circuit. Vaporizer in circuit. It's clear? Okay. We can name it as GEO, Goldman, EMO, and OMV. Okay. And Dr. Rijoy, can you uh, describe this particular vaporizer? Sir, Along with the classification. Please. We'll go into details later. Sir, it is a uh, reaction is it's a tech seven vaporizer because it is tech tech seven. Okay, fine. Sir, it is a variable bypass type of oh, vaporization method. It's flow over. Okay. Okay. Flow over and it should be having weeks because it's a modern vaporizer. Variable bypass, concentration calibrated. Okay. Thermal compensation, automatic thermal compensation. Automatic thermal compensation. Okay, by metallic strip. Agent specificity? Agent specific. Agent specific. agent specific. And you can mention depending on the color code also. It is agent specific and it is for isofluorine. Clear? Yes, sir. It's a plenum, plenum vaporizer. vaporizer. Plenum type. Plenum type, sir. Okay. And? Out of circuit. Out of circuit, sir. Out of circuit. Vaporizer out of circuit. So, with only with the classification, without knowing into other uh, nitty gritties, you have explained at least seven sentences or points regarding the vaporizer. Okay, so this is the way to tackle whenever you are given a vaporizer. Most of the time, you will be given one more vaporizer and probably the question will deviate to compare between the agents or compare between the equipments. Okay, so no need to think too much into it even if you don't know what is thermal compensation mechanism at least you can tell it is an automatic thermal compensation mechanism okay fine even if you get a penlon vaporizer you can say it's an automatic thermal compensation that time even if you are confused whether it is a uh, biometallic strip or metallic road at least you put this point and take the credits clear okay Something about plenum vaporizers. We have already mentioned there is a, you know, what is upstream and downstream? Just imagine a waterfall, whatever is in the beginning. Okay, that is upstream and towards down, it's downstream. Okay, so in for this vaporizer, this is upstream. This is the inlet, this is the outlet, this is downstream. Okay, so there is a positive pressure upstream of the vaporizer. That is the gas flow from the flow meter. So, which is pushing the carrier gas through the vaporizer. Okay, whether it goes through the bypass chamber or vaporizing chamber, that is decided by the splitting ratio. Okay, or the concentration diode. So, because of the positive pressure, it is going into the vaporizing chamber, takes some vapor and joins the outlet. Output. Okay, so output you get both. So, this is the positive pressure from upstream to the downstream so that it carries some vapor molecules with the carrier gas. Clear? So that's the idea of plenum vaporizer. Plenum in Latin is opposite of vacuum. That is full. So even in our air conditioning terminology, um, it, is, it applies to air that is forced in, cleaned and temperature adjusted. Plenum vaporizers are designed for use with continuous flow of pressurized gas. <clears throat> Disadvantage is it has high internal resistance. Okay, so it cannot be used for a as a draw over vaporizer. So got the point? Yes, sir. Okay, it works by the pressure difference because of the positive pressure upstream. It works. What is a precision vaporizer? Dr. Navin, what do you mean by precision vaporizer? I think we have already discussed in the beginning of our discussion. The vaporizer, sir, we uh, inject. Uh... Uh, or extract precise amount of uh, liquid for vaporization and mixing in common outlet gas, sir. Or uh, maybe we can put in a better words. We are giving an output of fully saturated anesthetic vapor. Okay. 
sir goldman's you are not sure about how much uh, saturated vapor is coming out because this carrier gas is passing through the baffles this wicks uh, this uh, systems and then going through the vapor vaporizing chamber there is every possibility that maximum saturated fully saturated vapor is coming and joining at the outlet okay so that is the precision okay so if you put a dial setting of 2% almost 2% should be coming out okay you need not pray god i am putting 2% i hope 2% comes out no so modern vaporizers are designed with other features including the thermal compensation features so that a fully saturated anesthetic vapor comes out of the vaporizer equipment okay so that is the idea of precision vaporizer sure. so modern versions are universally agent specific they are referred to as flow stabilized that means over a wide range they have been tested for accuracy so you, here you can see the uh, relationship between the dial setting and the percentage okay Hmm. fine draw over vaporizers as we mentioned the pressure gradient is created by downstream slightly only. negativity okay only when there is a pressure difference gas will flow plenum vaporizers we created positive pressure upstream here actually with the mask or uh, something or through the circuit we are creating negative pressure and draws in carrier gas and it flows through the vaporizing chamber so it should be low resistant equipment okay otherwise patient will go in for fatigue here yeah, these are the examples emo vaporizer this is another picture and this is something i want you to listen to it's not always the patient's effort that draws uh, carrier gas through the vaporizer you can have bellows bellow to create right. negative pressure so you create negative pressure by um, inflating the bellow then it will draw gas from the output so indirectly this negative pressure will draw from inlet and the saturated vapor will go into the circuit okay fine so this is the idea we have to have draw over vaporizer actually we are creating a negative pressure this side either by the patient or with the help of inflating mm-hmm. bellows so we all know about the reservoir bag basically we create use it to create positive pressure here the bellows are used to create negative pressure clear so you know what is a plenum vaporizer what is a draw over vaporizer what is a precision vaporizer okay and we'll discuss something on temperature compensation what is the kind of tem- temperature compensation i have put in this slide is bimetallic strip sir it's a bimetallic strip okay so how bimetallic strip works sir when there two there is different metals joined together so when temperature fluctuates this expansion contraction happens at two different rates okay so the shape of this metallic strip changes with the change in the temperature so here first you can have the vaporizer here so this is the bypass chamber so initially the by a metallic strip is positioned like this it escapes and some a, a portion of the carrier gas goes into the vaporizing chamber takes vapor and joins the outlet okay now what happens when cooling occurs in the operating room cooling temperature or as vaporization happens when the liquid starts to cool this one straightens and almost reduces the opening for the bypass gas so what will happen in uh, effectively more oh, of the gas flow. will be pushed to go into the, the vaporizing chamber and take the vapor okay it is just like um, initially the liquid was warm enough so you are getting um, good enough enthusiastic workers to do the job now the liquid starts cooling so the enthusiastic workers are unable to do the job with the precision so what you are doing is you are recruiting some more people from this bypass to go and take the vapor and come out because the saturated vapor pressure is coming down 
okay previously there were 100 molecules available above so we could easily take now it's only 80 so we need more carrier gas to take from the whatever is available okay so this is the comparison chart this is at the ambient temperature they were good enough opening in the bypass chamber as the liquid cools the bimetallic strip changes shape this variable uh, bypass chamber is slightly closed so that more gas flows through the vaporizing chamber and takes even whatever previous output was there, we'll try to maintain. So this is happening automatically. We anesthesiologists need not uh, uh, go with the hammer and change the metal, uh, the my metallic strip. It happens automatically. So there are enough research going into this field. So they have studied the thermal conductivity, conductance, specific heat and all. So they have selected the materials, clear? So there is another bimetallic arrangement like we see in Penlon vaporizers. Here the inner rod is made up of inver, okay, it's an alloy, relatively non-expansive metal. Outer jacket is in contact with the vaporizing liquid and is made up of an expansive metal brass. Can you see the brass covering outer jacket? Okay, so what happens when the liquid cools? Now, the bimetallic arrangement is pushed into the bypass chamber. Now the opening is less. So more of gas is forced to go into the vaporizing chamber and come out with the almost equivalent. What, whatever output was here, it should be there. Okay. So this is the bimetallic arrangement. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sai Balaji. Can you describe this vaporizers? Now we will go eat uh, by um, specific vaporizers. Tech 5 vaporizer. Can you describe according to the classification given here? Uh, the above picture is a Tech 5 vaporizer. Based on vaporization method, it is a flow over big, big method. Okay, flow over and with wicks. Okay. And regulation of outputs are variable bypass. Uh, okay. Variable bypass concentrated. Calibrated. Temperature compensation? Altered uh, temperature. Altered flow. Automatic temperature compensation. Okay. There is a bimetallic strip. By automatic thermal. At the bottom chamber. That's uh, in the bypass chamber. Agent specificity? Agent specific, sir. Isoprene. Isoprene. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. How about uh, this classification? Plenum type. It is a plenum vaporizer, high resistance vaporizer. And out, uh, where it is located? Out of circuit. Out of circuit. Vaporizer out of circuit. So we have given almost seven points on the equipment, even without dissecting into the finer details of the vaporizer. Okay, fine. So this is the internal structure of this Tech 5 vaporizer. You have seen this picture. This picture I think I have taken from uh, Ward, Ward's anesthetic equipment. So now our job is to identify the parts first. What is one? Inlet. Inlet. Vaporizer inlet. What is two? Two is the bi angle bi boxes. Strips and bimetallic strip. Yeah, so bimetallic passes. strip is down. Yes, two is this is the IPPV assembly or an elongated passage. Because last uh, class we have discussed about the uh, pumping effect. Okay. To reduce the pumping effect, we should have the inlet as much elongated as possible. So these are not separate ones. These are all continuous cavities. Okay. So gas comes and flows like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and comes out. Okay. We'll see the functional analysis later. So this is the IPPV assembly. This is also termed as IPPV assembly. What about these round ones? Vix. Helical wicks. Yeah, helical wicks. Yeah. Again, these helical are continuous wicks. ones. If you think in three-dimensional format, these are continuous helical ones. You have seen the staircase, no? Helical staircase like this. Okay. Because of the wicks, maximum liquid agent comes in the lower um, parts. And as it comes up, it's less. But anyway, the carrier gas has to go through all the wicks to reach the vaporizing chamber. Okay. So four is... Liquid, liquid, agent. Agent. liquid agent. Okay. Now the five is? 
rotary valve rotary valve 6 is ஹெலிக்கல் விக்ஸ் and then comes to the vaporizing chamber takes the vapor okay coming through the wicks itself it will get start uh, to get saturated after leaving the vaporizing chamber it will be almost fully saturated and it goes to the mixing chamber where the bypass carrier gas also will join eight is the outlet okay to visualize it further the first inlet it goes into the elongated tubing it also goes to the bypass chamber there is a bimetallic strip as the liquid cools because it is in very close proximity with the liquid agent this gate will start to close so most more of the uh, carrier gas will be forced to go through the vaporizing uh, chamber so here it goes and goes to the mixing chamber what happens to the Uh, gas coming to the elongated chamber the IC, ippv assembly as i mentioned it goes through it and then comes along goes to the uh, wicks helical wicks okay then it comes above the then it flows over the liquid agent takes maximum saturated vapor then it goes goes to the mixing chamber and the output gives a precision output of the saturated vapor okay fine it is clear working principle of tech 5 vaporizer so next time when you see the picture in our uh, textbooks be it dorsh or watts or ison craft you just imagine this happening going carrier gas getting split here it depends on how much it splits it depends on the dial setting goes through the elongated uh passage or the ippv assembly then it starts its journey through the helical wicks it starts getting you can see the change in color it starts getting saturated then it flows over the vaporizing chamber or liquid agent carries the fully saturated vapor goes through this pass passage gets to the mixing chamber and the output comes clear okay this is another cross section again we'll try to trace it uh, can you identify the parts i think i'll uh, describe and go otherwise we don't finish so this is the portion where it enters okay it enters this is the bypass chamber you can see the bimetallic strip down can you see my pointer mouse pointer yes sir okay so this is the bi bypass chamber where you get the bimetallic strip and it uh, goes along and goes to the mixing chamber this is one part second part is getting split here depending on the control dial setting it goes to the top part then again it comes down goes to the ippv assembly you know from here it is three dimensionally continuous okay like a staircase then it goes and now it starts its journey through the helical wicks it enters the wicks then it here is the vaporizing chamber it flows over the vaporized liquid agent now it gets fully saturated it negotiates through the pathway okay it goes and goes to the mixing chamber and the output comes so clear so next time you see this picture try to trace the um, pathway of the carrier gas and the, where the splitting occurs how it goes along the ippv assembly the helical wicks how it flows over the liquid agent fully saturated vapor how it comes to the mixing chamber and output is it clear yes sir okay fine so other things external features um this is the control dial don't feel bad because i am telling finer details because i am not underestimating anybody like exam it is required okay there is a release button this is the release button 
located at the rear of the dial. Last class we have mentioned from tech five onwards, the uh, re release button is in the rear side, posterior side, so that single-handedly you can open. Only after pressing the rear release button, you can rotate the control dial. And there is a locking lever. After you mount it, the lever should be turned. And what is this? Bottom right. It is the side so the content of the liquid. Yeah, liquid agent. Okay, fine. So there is an internal baffle system, thermostat bimetallic strip at the bottom in a separate chamber. There is a spiral wick, wick skirts dip into the liquid agent. There is an IPP assembly. I've explained all, I think. So now filling devices. What are the filling devices specific for our agent specific tech five vaporizers? Key no. fill system. Keyed filling. Okay, it's like a lock and key principle. You can see here one component. The this is part of the vaporizer. This is the key. This is part of key. Okay, so this one fits exactly here, but this won't fit into this channel. Okay. So this is the part in the filler tube. This is for halothane. And there is, these are the filling, keyed filling devices. Even at the bottle end, there is another filler cap, which is again agent specific. And in the bottle, there is a bottle neck. There is one component, which is again specific to that particular agent. So what is the disadvantage with this keyed filling device? Dr. Navin. Dr. Naveen, you are with us. There is more uh, leak during filling. No, like uh, you have vaporizer, you have agent, but if you don't have the keyed filling device, you cannot fill. Okay. Yeah. The house is yours. Um, you are there, but if key is not there, you can't enter the house. Okay. Sir. Simple. Yes, sir. Okay. Basically, it's for safety so that no stranger will get into the house. But if you lose the uh, key, you are uh, as good as a stranger. Okay, so that is but one disadvantage. If key is by missing, manually pushing it, sir, we can fill, sir. <laughs> you you have to struggle to fill. Hmm? <laughs> Little bit, sir. Lock and key principle. Little okay. bit, sir. <laughs> okay, that is uh, out of record. Hmm? Okay, so this is called Fraser Sweatman Pin Safety System for Isofluorine. Okay, so this is the example. This is how you put the key, uh, key device into the bottle, attach it. So now, how do you fill with the agent? You can continue. So uh, first we'll uh, label this. What is this part labeled one? So this, this is site on the uh, vaporizer, sir. Okay, yeah. Where key... so, uh, what is this one? Hole at the vaporizer, sir. I don't Civil know what name. So better put it as a filling or draining port. Okay. Oh, port. Draining port. Hmm. How about this part name two? That yeah, two place upwards. No, that is the locking lever. Okay. Once no. the key is engaged, you push it down, then it's locked. Okay. Secured. What is three? Chamber lock. Okay. Once you unlock only, you can um, raise the bottle and start filling. Four is glass. side glass. Hmm? Side glass indicator. Five is the five is filler tube. Okay. This is part of the key filling. So once you give the technical term, your examiner also will be happy. Your discussion won't get dragged. Okay, so what is this? Draining port or filling port. port. This is the locking lever. This is a side glass. This is a chamber lock. This is a filler tube. Simple. Okay, you need not waste precious time during your exam. Okay, sometimes examiners also get exhausted. Yeah, hmm? so sometimes uh, there will be five or six or seven candidates. Okay, so now you engage the key filling device into the filling port. So what's the next step? Locking lever. Yeah, now you secure it. Turn the locking lever. Hmm? Okay, now? Pour the liquid. Uh, make it vertical and 
open the chamber lock then only liquid will start flowing into the chamber so what you will see you will see the liquid level rising in the side glass sir. side glass okay so now how do we empty it again uh, usually we don't empty these days with the modern agents like sir fluorine uh, previously halothane we had to empty most often okay at least every two weeks because of the thymol preservative so again the locking lever is engaged you lower the bottle open the chamber lock then liquid will start falling back into the bottle bottle so this is a six step method with kit filling device okay when this was introduced everybody was happy now we have a foolproof mechanism to avoid cross filling or trans filling of vaporizers okay you can't fill one agent in another dedicated vaporizer okay after some time we the modern people are more greedy and uh, we need more precision so we started inventing other things that we'll come to later so what is the dial setting in tech five vaporizer for the halothane it's maximum 5 5% okay so fluorine 5% so fluorine is 8% okay yes you are 8% okay fine so maintenance it's uh, nothing much exterior of the vaporizer may be white with a damp cloth other cleaning methods are uh, um, other cleaning or disinfection should be attempted no other cleaning should be attempted halothane vaporizer should be drained every 2 weeks or when the level is low return to service every 3 years okay tech 4 was annual maintenance okay so who is going to describe this vaporizer dr rajoy Oh, sir yeah can you describe the vaporizer along this classification vaporization method uh, sir uh, vaporization method is sir uh, flower types okay with uh, wicks okay. okay fine regulation of output sir uh, output is sir uh, uh, variable variable sir variable variable bypass concentration calibrated temperature compensation automatic, automatic term okay you know what Agent is the specific. compensation inside is it by metallic strip or some by metallic strip sir no 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 it's a metallic rod okay so this is the idea if you don't know just mention that it is automatic thermo compensation okay depends on which center you are taking exam agent specificity sir it is agent specific sir okay so this is for halothane this is for isoflurane right? isoflurane okay then next classification Sir, it is plenum type, sir. Plenum type again, yeah. And sir, location uh, is uh, out. We use vaporizer. Vaporizer no? out of circuit. Okay, fine. So you have given some six, seven points about this vaporizer. So here you can see the filling type of uh, filler type of uh, funnel filling type of vaporizing filling. So this is the working principle. I am not going to the detail because you will we will consume more time. So this is the inlet. okay it comes here then it goes to the elongated it splits into two bypass and uh, it goes this one goes to the mixing chamber and this one goes to the uh, vaporizing chamber through the elongated pathway gets into the uh, vaporizing chamber and here the opening is dictated by the dial setting and then it uh, joins the mixing chamber okay so when there is a temperature fall okay this rod will move up closing the bypass chamber some more so that more of carrier gas will be directed towards the vaporizing chamber so this is the thermo compensation mechanism with the dragger 19.1 vaporizer okay one point not the funnel fill design which has been superseded by agent specific key fill device in subsequent generations okay so this is the disadvantage with vapor 19.1 okay fine who is taking the next vaporizer uh dr mohan one more person is raising hands uh dr pankaj jain 
you can also join us you can introduce yourself yes sir i am uh, dr pankaj sir from pune okay fine yes sir you are uh, which year and cc president sir exam going sir exam going okay so you are the best person to describe this dragger yes, paper 2000 paper so you know you, you you can see the picture right yes sir you, you can start describing along the classification so vaporization output vaporization method sir yeah okay so in vaporization method it is a uh, flow or with wick okay. sir okay regulation uh, of output regulation of output is variable bypass concentration calibrated okay fine sir automatic thermocompensation okay agent specific sir okay plenum type okay and your pressure out of circuit sir okay fine so um, what is the thing marked in white circle here sir it is uh, sir it is unlock means it is off sir no this is for transport transport mode transport transport yes, mode okay once we turn the dial to transport mode the tipping risk is not there not what is tipping what is tipping so tipping is sir uh, when we if the agent will fall uh, in the circuit sir uh, do they yes. bypass chamber, bypass chamber okay. yes. so unanticipated high concentration is possible because previous machines the mounting of vaporizers vaporizers were not fully assured that it will be vertically mounted so even if there is a 15 degree 20 degree tilt the agent can spill over and give very high concentration so the remedial measure this uh, described was to start on very high flow of oxygen and uh, flush the vaporizer for some 5 to 10 minutes okay so this generation onwards tipping risk is not there because during when you unmount the vaporizer it should be in the transport mode okay yes fine so we were thinking about uh, uh, some disadvantages about uh, tech 5 now we move on to tech 7 which will make our life more easier okay uh, dr sai balaji quickly because we have already mentioned about the classification vaporization method vaporization method will be flow over sir okay with wicks variable bypass okay concentration calibrated to uh, automatic temperature compensation okay agent specific okay plenum type okay out of circuit allocation okay so can you name the vaporizer It's Tech seven. It's Tech labeled seven. there. Okay. So Tech. how it is different from Tech five? Uh, sir, can I pitch in, sir? Yeah, fine. Sir, it is easy fill filler mechanism. Okay. Newer uh, ergonomics and design. Okay. Sir, then it is uh, service free, sir. Okay, fine. so most cosmetically they have improved yes, and the kid filling system specific uh, filling systems have been evolved because now we can do away with the kid filling things what are these specific ones filling systems sir it is uh, that uh, it's a specific lock and key type sir easy fill easy fill sir we call it okay okay easy fill what is this quick fill quick fill quick fill quick fill, quick fill sir quick fill this is um, g easy fill okay there is slight difference you will see this is dragger dragger fill system okay this one is the quick fill okay yes sir now you can appreciate the difference no this yes is? easy fill easy fill this is dragger fill dragger fill okay this is quick fill quick fill quick okay fill clear so once yes. you have the bottle you have this uh, this one specifically fitting into your vaporizer you can fill you need not search for uh, lock and key principle and lock and key principle is there 
the key cannot be lost hmm? it comes with each bottle and uh, you should note this uh, bottle is secured by a crimped metal seal okay this is for safety one more thing for a desk fluorine what is the heat filling system easy fill no anybody on the chat no quick fill no 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 when you see the answer uh, you will be wondering why it is not coming to your mind safety fill system okay this is specific to desflurane okay so now you know the difference between these four yes sir this yes, is easy fill this is ge healthcare patented one this is dragger fill goes to dragger this one is the quick fill quick fill quick fill system okay next is for uh, desflurane it is safety safety safety, 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 safety fill okay system. okay this even applies to our aladdin vaporizers abinga aaj ke se bhook hai khana ban gaya aa jao kuch paiye okay so one more thing i need to mention about uh, desflurane because you know desflurane the saturated vapor pressure is very close to atmospheric pressure it's almost 666 okay the moment you open the bottle everything will get into the vapor state okay it's a very volatile liquid so what they have done is so there is an um, condenser pressurized at the ambient temperature okay because it will go beyond its boiling point what is the boiling point of desflurane so 22.8 22.8 excellent okay the glass bottle is encased in a plastic coat so even if there is a crack in the glass the gas the vapor in huge amounts cannot escape into the atmosphere okay so this is another safety feature with the desflurane vaporizer bottle okay aladdin cassette vaporizers they also have the keyed filling system to fill easy fill and safety fill okay serve floor and quick fill isofluorine there is a key fill system desflurane safety fill clear okay we will be distributing yes. this pdf version of this uh, presentation also so you can revise it okay so now um, who is helping me to describe how we avoid using more than one vaporizer at a time so what are yeah, the mechanisms vaporizer so interlocking device interlocking systems okay first uh, which one you want to discuss selected tech or uh, dragger interlock we'll discuss selected tech okay simple now select a tech vaporizer clear yeah? you have seen the extension rod in the vaporizers yes sir okay so i have highlighted it in the orange color okay so once you mount the vaporizer okay so this is the locking lever the locking lever will engage it in the manifold okay can you visualize it because i am trying with the pictures to give you a visual impression hmm? now this is the release button okay only after pushing the release button you can turn the vaporizer dial clear okay yes, sir. so the moment you press the release button this rod will move forward and the extension rod will be pushed laterally okay the moment you open the vaporizer by pushing the release button the extension rod extends laterally okay now you can open this vaporizer no issues once this is open you remember that the extension rods are projecting more laterally from the vaporizer okay now you try to push the release button of this second vaporizer so what will happen 
again the similar mechanism will act it will try to push its extension rod laterally but because the space has already been taken by this laterally pushed extension rod of vaporizer 1 vaporizer 2 extension rod cannot come out okay it is pushed and kept inside indirectly your release button activation is not possible you cannot rotate the dial is it clear yes okay so locking once more the locking lever is engaging or fitting the vaporizer into the manifold so now we have two vaporizers in the manifold the moment you push the releasing button or activate the release button this rod will move forward again you can see it once more and this extension rod extends laterally sideways so when you try to activate the release button of second vaporizer same thing should have happened the extension rod should have come out but there is no space it is cramped for space that means you cannot activate the release button of the second vaporizer when the first one is open and vice versa okay it's clear yes, and one more thing the newer vaporizers the gas through the manifold is not at all entering into the, into the vaporizer okay it's not going through the bypass chamber and coming back to the manifold no it is actually going through the manifold bypass here the this vaporizer b is not open so it is not getting into the vaporizer at all vaporizer a is open so from the back manifold it goes into the vaporizer takes the vapor and joins the manifold again so olden vaporizers whether you activate or not gas used to flow through the bypass chamber now things have changed newer modern vaporizers the carrier gas is not at all going into the vaporizer it's going through the manifold bypass i'll show you one more picture so this is the route it takes i hope it is clear so here another uh, selector tech vaporizer picture here you can see the o ring these are the inlet to the vaporizer and this is the vaporizer outlet connection okay you can see here a rounded ball like structure closing it here also it is closed here also it is closed all both the vaporizers are in off position now what happens when the carrier gas comes because this gate is closed it has to go through the manifold bypass not at all entering the vaporizer one it goes and second one is also not open so there is this gate is again closed it goes through the manifold bypass and goes to the machine outlet zero vaporizer vapor input clear now we will try to open vaporizer 2 so vaporizer 2 is open you would have noticed that the extension rod is getting extended laterally sideways you can appreciate it again okay when the vaporizer 2 is getting on the extension rod extends laterally and this port star open now the port to the vaporizer inlet is open the port connecting the vaporizer outlet is also open and this round spherical ball closes the passage through the manifold bypass so what will happen here this side vaporizer one nothing special the gate is closed it has to go through the manifold bypass and now since the gate here is open and this is the only way to go forward the carrier gas goes to the vaporizer 2 which is on depending on the dial setting it carries the vapor and comes back to the manifold clear now a mischievous anesthesia resident is trying to open the vaporizer 1 is it possible now is there any is there enough space for this to extend laterally no sir it is not possible so that is the selected tech mechanism okay when vaporizer 2 is on vaporizer 1 cannot be switched on similarly when vaporizer 1 is on vaporizer 2 cannot be switched on so that ensures that only one vaporizer works at a time okay so these things should be clear 
newer vaporizers, the carrier gas is not at all going into the vaporizer unless it is open. And what happens is when it's open, this inlet is open and the bypass, manifold bypass is closed. Manifold bypass is different from vaporizer bypass. I think it is clear. Okay. You want to see it again? So both the vaporizers are closed. So the carrier gas flows through the manifold bypass to the outlet. Now we open the vaporizer two. The extension rods extend laterally for vaporizer two. The input output uh, uh, openings are open now. The manifold is closed. So the carrier gas flows through the manifold bypass. And when it comes to vaporizer two, it cannot go through the bypass. It has to go through the vaporizing chamber. Okay, and saturated vapor comes and joins back the machine outlet. So if you try to open vaporizer one, there is no space for this rod to go laterally and this one may be accommodated, but this side is not happening. So we cannot open the vaporizer one. Okay, so if you see the manifold in modern machines, you can notice that somewhere it is written, it takes Tech 7 or above. It is specific. And some machines you can see it is tech 4 and above, tech 5 and above. These are all depends on finer uh, locking principles or devices attached to the manifold. So next time you go to the machine, just see how is the pins, springs are connected there. So this is the vaporizer inlet to the vaporizer. The vaporizer output comes and joins the manifold through this. This one for the vaporizer two. Clear? So this is the in, this is the out from the vaporizer. Again, you can see the vaporizer mounted. You can see the extension rod. When this is open, this extension rod gets getting pushed laterally so that whatever vaporizer here cannot be opened. Okay, here you can see tech six or above. Okay, so you have to read this instruction. So there are minor differences. Can you see a small opening here? So this will accommodate the lateral movement of the, or sideways extension movement of the extension rod. Okay, because it's on the side. Okay, fine. So now dragger interlock system. Can somebody explain to me what is dragger interlock system? The picture is in front of you. So this is your chance, I'll take rest. Please go ahead. <coughs> Nobody is helping me. Okay. Dr. Jodi, I think you can uh, join the panel. You want to attempt this? Dr. Jyoti, you can unmute and talk. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. You have been listening to our discussion, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so now we are into dragger interlock system. What happens when I open one of the vapor devices? Uh, sir, suppose we uh, mount a vapor I request and... all the panelists to keep the mic muted. Otherwise, we'll get noise. Whenever you are speaking, you can unmute and talk. Okay. Uh, sir, yeah. if we consider this example and we mount a vaporizer in the orange uh, um, First, spot. we'll uh, open this one, isofluorine. Okay. Halothane and fluorine and isofluorine. Okay, I'll open it for you, isofluorine. Okay, now what happens? Okay, so this rod is getting pushed. So now this is locked. This rod is also getting pushed. This is also locked. Okay, now even if you try with force, you cannot open this. I think Dr. Jodi, your mic is muted. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, okay. So 
when this rod is engaging into this slot we cannot rotate this vaporizer dials okay similarly if you open the end fluoride the middle one again this rod gets pushed up eventually these two rods will get pushed down and like a lock these two are stuck we cannot rotate okay yes. so same principle with the halothane also even if you switch on halothane this rod goes up because this is disengaged these two rods will get engaged so this is how we make sure that only one vaporizer is functioning at a time okay Okay, Dr. Jodi, since you have joined now, you can describe Tech 6 vaporizer. Uh, you are fortunate to get a different kind of vaporizer. Okay, so vaporization method I'll put because uh, the app word is saturated vapor generators because it's an injection type. So regulation of output also is injection type. How about the temperature compensation method? It is a... Uh, uh Supplied heat. Sir. Supplied heat. Okay, excellent. Agent specificity? Agent specific for uh, desflurane. Okay, there is nothing equivalent to desflurane. Desflurane is unique, no? Yes, yeah. Sir. Is it a plenum? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Location? Can we out use it the... within circuit or out of circuit? Out of circuit, sir. Out of circuit. Okay, anyway, it's a high resistance. And um, one more speciality is this has to be electrically powered. Yeah. All the other vaporizers, we depend just on the plenum principle and then we proceed with getting the output. Okay? Fine. So, can you describe the front panel of a desflurane vaporizer? Have you used a desflurane vaporizer? Sir, can I, can I pitch in, sir? Yeah, please, Dr. Pankaj. Right. So it is, uh, sir, it is uh, amber colored uh, uh, alarm system is there, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. So amber. once we power it on, it gets yes, switched on automatically. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, then sir. Then it will take at least a few minutes. Yes, sir. So it what's will... happening during that time? So it is switches from amber to green color, sir. Okay. So when it is ready for operational, it is green color. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Then? So then, uh, when we turn, uh, when we further uh, uh, proceed, sir, it will turn to red, where there will be no output, sir. Okay. So then, uh -huh. again, when there is, when it shows a low level and no output, there is no output coming. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Then how is the dial? How much, how, how is the dial setting? Maximum dial setting is? 18, sir. 18, sir. 18. 18. I, 18. I was really surprised because a very low percentage of people got it right during our pre-test. It's 18%. So can I turn it right from 0 to 18 straight away? No, sir. So 1% graduation to 10, sir and 2% till 18. Okay, fine. So what happens at 12%? Sir, uh, the dial release uh, is at... Again, back. you have to activate the release button again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go beyond 12%. So 12 it's a safety 20. feature because you are going to give a very high percentage. There is a risk of uh, hypoxic mixture creating. Because yes, they, they might be running on 25%. Suddenly, Cerefluorine and all, we'll be using only 2%, 2.5%, 3%. Here, all of a sudden, we are trying to achieve 18%. So, yeah. yes, the remaining gas percentage will be cramped. Because 18 volume percentage is going to be desfluorine. So, to make us aware about that, after 12%, it is again one more interest. overriding is required. Okay. Yes. Yes, you have used the desflurane? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, um, I'll ask you, how do you fill the vaporizer? Okay, I'll come to that later. Yes, so, sir. just for uh, beginners or those who have 
um, beginning to read the web pricer and desflurane there are some interesting facts about desflurane okay uh, those who remember cricket uh, you'll be remembering yuvraj singh hitting six sixes okay so i'll tell you some facts related to six in desflurane okay who can help me how many number of fluoride atoms here desflurane six sir there are six okay what is the saturated vapor pressure at 20 degrees in millimeters of mercury 666 triple six sir okay it's six. not exactly 666 six, different textbooks will give slightly varying 669 670 667 is easy to remember as 666 okay so what is the boiling point 22.8 sir 22.8 probably 22. we can put 8. it as 6 into 4 24 at least we'll be in yeah. range for yes, viva sir. even if you give 23 or 24 doesn't matter so 6 into 4 is 24 so what is the mac percent mac in percentage 6% almost 6% 5.7 yeah. we'll put it as 6 because this is for easy remembering okay oil gas partition coefficient is 19 but i'll put it as 19. 6 into 3 is 18 so the vaporizer for desflurane is tech 66 tech 6 six. again again one 6 comes and the maximum dial setting is 18 18, 18, 18 6 into 3 16. and overriding required at 12 which is 6 into 2 okay so there are a good number of uh, digits related to 6 Number of atoms, a fluoride atom six, saturated vapor pressure sixty-six, boiling point six into four twenty-four. It's actually twenty-two point eight or twenty-three. Mac is six. Oil gas partition coefficient, DC to remember as six is eighteen percent. Tech six vaporizer is used. Maximum dial six into three eighteen. Overriding requires at six into two twelve. Okay, one more thing. We have already mentioned uh, about the LED indicators. how many indicators here you can count so them five, no? five sir five led lights one for uh, operation uh, warm up then uh, operational low agent low output alarm battery low okay and there is one more display here for liquid agent okay liquid level so actually this is 5 plus 1 6 again okay six led indicators in front so when it shows full that means 390 ml a liquid agent is seen lower level mostly 240 ml and when it shows the least maybe 60 ml is remaining what the idea about this 6 240 ml is one bottle is 240 ml when it comes to almost this level you can actually push in another 240 ml okay so what is this port for this one can you see my mouse pointer so this is some sir some this one can you see my mouse pointer yes sir this is some some sir this is for filling the liquid agent filling yes huh. okay okay there, there is a, a famous question why does fluorine needs to be heated and i think i had put a youtube video on that because uh, that was an interesting fact because um, all other agents the saturated vapor pressure is much lower it's around 240s 280s and all but we are not heating those people when it comes to desflurane we need to give heat so can somebody quickly tell me the logic i think one more person wants to join us Sir, Dr. Bhagya, you are allowed to talk now. You can unmute Sir, and talk. So, this is called on. Yeah, please, Sir, Dr. Pangas. So, yeah. this furin boils at twenty-two point eight degrees Celsius. Sir. Okay. So, at room temperature more than twenty-two point eight, the amount of uh, vapor formed will be limited only, sir. Hmm. No, no. By the heat. By the heat available. No, sir. The... We have to maintain no, no. the temperature, sir. We have to maintain the temperature constant throughout the vaporization. So we have to be. No, whenever the saturated vapor pressure reaches the atmospheric pressure, it starts to boil. Mm. Okay. So when the liquid temperature comes to twenty-three degrees, it's it's boiling. Yes, sir. It's ready to boil. Saturated vapor pressure is almost within hundred of our normal atmospheric pressure of seven sixty. 
so the logic is it's highly boiling it's a high tendency to boil out okay so what will happen is if you allow to boil on uh, vaporize on its own huge amount of uh, vapor will be coming out and to dilute it to our clinical use clinically use 6% or 8% we will have to use very high fresh gas flows because too much of vapor output is coming okay if you allow like a flow over that is not economical one thing because nowadays we are going into low flows low flows we cannot dilute this very high percentage this fluorine second thing is when too much of uh, molecules escape into the vapor phase there is loss of temperature significant loss of temperature at the liquid and suddenly liquid starts cooling and the vaporizer output dips significantly so a surge of vapor and then drops so precision is a difficult thing so what we are doing is we are heating it in a separate chamber to 39 degrees and to build the pressure to almost two atmospheric and then injecting it in a controlled manner into the mixing chamber okay so that's the logic we cannot manage this agent through our flow over mechanism so it needs a separate mechanism so that that is why to inject it we need a pressure of around 2 atmosphere or 1500 psig so that's the logic i hope it's clear you think you can search for my youtube video there it's only um, it hardly takes uh, 5 minutes okay Fine. A newly joined person, Dr. Bhagya, you want to explain this uh, vaporizer diagram? Hello. Dr. Bhagya? Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, you can speak loud. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, here uh, we have a fluid desflurane eater where the desflurane is heated up to 39 degrees centigrade. We okay. have two, ch two chambers which are arranged parallelly. One is for the fresh gas flow and other for the heated vapors of desflurane. Both okay. uh, uh, flow in uh, parallel. Okay. Uh, here we have a constant uh, flow control valve and here we have a cons uh, concentration dial. Okay. Uh, so when we set the concentration at that uh, percentage, uh, the whatever the vapor goes uh, flows in that uh, line, uh, we have a temp uh, pressure uh, pressure. Uh, uh, adjuster, sir. Pressure have, transducer. A pressure yeah. transducer in between. So what happens is like there is a variable uh, uh, depending on the pressure in the desflurane tube, uh, the pressure will be transferred to the pressure transducer and according to that the flow will be allowed in the bypass chambers. Okay, so the output is regulated by two things. One, our dial concentration, whatever we said. Second, the pressure reflected by the from the fresh gas flow outlet because there is a flow resistor. So this pressure will be sensed by the transducer. It will make final adjustment. So eventually there is a controlled amount of desflurane vapor, vapor released into the common manifold or fresh gas outlet. The thing is the fresh gas flow never goes into the liquid vapor vaporizing chamber. Okay. So this is how tech six vaporizer is different. Clear? I think this diagram is easy to uh, reproduce in your, your exams also. You can quickly draw this diagram, put this uh, labels and uh, you need to describe in minimal words if you can draw this diagram. I don't think it's a complicated one. Okay, so how do you fill desflurane vaporizer? So first you attach this safety, safety fill system, right? Attach it, then lift the bottle upwards so this will turn upwards okay you can see this yes, sir. then filling occurs the chamber gets open and then filling proceeds okay so this is the moment after that you again lower the bottle wait for a few seconds and then disengage it from the filling pot so this is important first to engage it Rotate it upwards, fill the vaporizer. After that, you ready, uh, lower it again. Wait for some time because whatever has to fall back should fall back and then disengage. What is different from desflurane filling to servofluorine filling? Yeah. 
who is attempting that question dr sai balaji who wants to attempt that question dr pangaj what is different in filling desflurane sir we can uh, fill desflurane while it's in use sir yeah okay exactly that's the point okay especially if it is in the lower range if it is in very yes, high probably it may be safer but the uh, manufacturer doesn't require that you stop the vaporizer okay yes, so yes, the yes. desflurane and all you cannot do it you close the vaporizer and then only fill the liquid agent yes. okay otherwise the, you you can see the liquid bubbling out from the vaporizer so that's an excellent point i think everybody should keep in mind okay you need not switch it off just for filling okay shall we move ahead to aladdin cassette vaporizer because we are already running short of time how many generations of aladdin vaporizers have come we are already into generation 2 okay so this is the first one this is the second one second generation aladdin vaporizer so the difference is uh, the previous gen first generation it is key fill system and now the present generation it's easy fill system so uh, who is helping me dr bhagya who joined now can you help me in labeling this one is it is the uh, uh, part which we insert inside the anesthesia workstation okay this is the agent chamber so you need to come out with the exact words hmm? okay so what is this two part label handle, two. handle transport okay. handle yeah handle okay fine three is Fill, uh, filling filling port okay key filling, filling port, port. Yeah. okay four, four is, is the, the uh, 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 this one the uh, fillers so the I mean amount of fluid present in the chamber, the chamber. level indicator liquid level indicator yes this one this knob control knob control knob hmm? not the control the, it is the uh, locking the key filler lock is there no previous one we have mentioned one blue one so this is the thing which uh, engages or locks the key filler okay okay sir. fine okay sir so clear this is the labeling okay so the when it comes to aladdin vaporizer you have to note down few points three filling options key fill quick fill safety fill okay Uh, provides fresh gas flow and concentration compensation self check is there diagnostics is there and uh, usually it's used with very low flows so 200 ml per minute will allow the agent delivery but uh, 150 ml per minute the agent delivery will be shut off okay so this is the diagram of uh, aladdin vaporizer i won't be going into much details because um, i think a few months back there was an excellent review article by dr pangaj kundra and team so you can i think i have shared the article today so to know about the aladdin vaporizer we'll re remove all the ornaments and see it is just like our historical vaporizer simple diagram so what happens is the fresh gas flow goes through the bypass chamber part of it will go into the vaporizing chamber inlet where you can find the vapor molecules saturated vapor molecules are uh, dancing over the liquid agent the carrier gas takes the agent the um, vapor molecules and through the outlet chamber it goes and joins the common gas outlet so if this is happening even with the added uh, features or components the working principle is the same only thing is to make sure there is some precision they have added some electronically software controlled monitors and sensors so that this will be giving precise output okay you can see one cassette id magnetic one liquid level sensor is there there is an outflow check valve here is an inflow check valve there is a one way valve here proportional valve here there is a temperature sensor for the manifold flow meters are there sensing the flows okay so these are the components you can go into the details from that journal okay again if you see fresh gas flow flows through the bypass chamber then part of it goes into the 
vaporizing chamber takes the vapor carries the vapor and goes back to the manifold okay corrective measures will be taken depending on the input given by the sensors so two parts one is cpu and the cassette we'll go to the cassette part there is a liquid sense level cassette magnetic cassette id there is a cassette temperature sensor there is a check valve at the inflow and the outflow there is a liquid spill prevention valve so there is no question of tipping with the aladdin vaporizers some of my friends uh, said it like that in our pretest so this is something important there is a cassette pressure sensor so whenever unintentionally the pressure builds up inside the vaporizing chamber this will cassette pressure relief valve will be releasing the added vapor into the scavenging system and till the pressure comes back to an acceptable level there won't be any output from the vapor aladdin vaporizer okay and then there are some flow sensors at the inflow and outflow and most important thing is there is a temperature sensor and beware about this particular sign it says more sophisticated temperature sensing mode is there it is there in the second generation aladdin vaporizers okay here actually this uh, review article gives beautiful diagrams so the pressure is sensed in the vaporizing chamber if it is too high the output ceases and after this additional vapors are released into the scavenging system and the pressure goes back to normal only the functioning resumes okay that is one safety feature so this is the cross section um somebody like to help me this is the inlet you can speak along yes sir goes to the lamellae and uh, Lam wicks these are this series of lamellae and wicks okay fine after that saturated vapor goes to the outlet so what are these four five things so to identify the identification magnets so it's not visible externally you can see another four uh, dots here so electronic that, temperature sensor yeah electronic temperature sensor and liquid anesthetic sensor agent level sensor okay what is this this is the fill system filling system okay what is this label so as the side thing? side glass to top. see the level a liquid level window okay fine so here eight is the lock this will engage it into the machine okay so through the inlet the carrier gas comes takes the vapor is saturated and leaves the vaporizer so all the uh, corrective measures sophisticated things are controlled by the cpu how much is the dial concentration and all again filling you can see the filler again it's a key fill system here for desflurane safety fill system the liquid agent goes into this sump and then this is the vaporizing chamber with the baffles is clear though it is sophisticated in nutshell or uh, in real sense it is simple only thing is precision is ensured by added things now we go into another advanced mode injection vaporizers who who has used the, in the injection vaporizers any one of our panelists okay that means uh, none of us have used even i have not used i have not seen also but still it's uh, fun to learn about uh, injection vaporizers okay i'll give you some simple calculation how do we achieve uh, 2% end tidal anesthetic concentration of silver fluorine that is the question okay so 2% means volume of volume in ml of vapor silver fluorine divided by total capacity of reservoir into 100 is 2 okay so volume divided by you can see take the total capacity including the breathing circuit frc everything into 6 liters so everything will boil down to 
120 ml so in this uh, 6000 ml of capacity reservoir if you can put 120 ml of vaporizer in you get 2% end tidal anesthetic concentration of sulfurane i hope you are following okay so with uh, fresh gas flow of 6 liter per minute we can achieve switch over in 1 minute okay fine now we are going into a low flow system where we intend to give only 180 ml per minute which is the near metabolic fresh gas flow 3.5 ml per kg for a 50 kg patient it's around 180 ml so with we need to get this two person in total concentration with a fresh gas flow 180 ml so how much should be the dial concentration we have to set okay so percentage servo is volume in ml of servo fluorine divided by total fresh gas flow into 100 now we know that we need around 120 ml of servo fluorine our fresh gas flow is 180 ml so total fresh gas flow coming out should be 120 plus 180 so 120 is the volume of servo fluorine vapor 180 is the fresh gas flow at the flow meters plus 120 ml of servo fluorine into 100 so this will come down to 120 divided by 300 into 100 okay which will come to 40 percent is there any means to get 40 percent servo fluorine from our vaporizers our panelist friends how much we can achieve maximum 18 percent eight percent so fluorine is only eight percent so how to achieve 40 percent so we cannot manage with our flow over vaporizers we need some other method okay so it seems almost impossible with our vaporizers we have discussed so far so maximum is eight percent so whenever there is a word impossible there is again a possibility of i am possible so this has come out with the macquit vaporizers and our uh, dragger diva systems okay this is the macquit injection vaporizers you can read that review article again so i'll try to simply introduce you to this vaporizer i think in telegram i intentionally posted the picture of this vaporizer so that you will be familiar with this uh, for our faster discussion. Okay, fine. So this is the diagram here. Actually, uh, if you think it in simple terms, it's simple. This is a filling port. We are putting the liquid agent into this sum. Okay. So there is a gas escape pipe through that uh, some bubbles can escape into the above the liquid level. There is an electronic level indicators and then there is a vaporizer pressure transducer and this is the injection vaporizer injector mechanism okay there is a lid sensor so that the lid should not be open while it is functioning so it will make sure that unless the lid is properly closed the uh, vaporizer will not work and uh, there is a vaporizer heating foil and there is a sensor also how much it is to be sensed vaporizer chamber temperature sensor is there there is a cpu there is an optical vaporizer injection detector that will detect how much vapor is uh, injected into the chamber. And this is something you need to look into. There is a drive gas. Okay. So there is a drive gas pushing, being pushed into the vaporizer, this chamber, so that there is an added pressure into this chamber. So 100 kilopascal is one atmosphere. So now the pressure is 120 kilopascal. Okay. So this will keep pushing the liquid into the injector. Okay. If you see, the liquid is getting pushed into the vaporizer injector. If you check the fresh gas inlet, it passes through the vaporizing chamber. As long as there is nothing injected, it will go like a carrier gas itself. Now, depending on the dial setting, the precision amount of liquid vaporize, liquid agent will be injected into the vaporizing chamber. You can see the injection happening. And this is supervised and decided and controlled by the CPU. 
and now what happens is the carrier gas takes the desired amount of anesthetic agent into the outlet so this is one way of uh, incorporating or uh, combining a very high concentration of uh, liquid agent into the fresh gas outlet forget about our previous limitation of 8% 18% and all here up to 14% and above we can incorporate into the fresh gas outlet so that we can actually maintain with very low fresh gas flows okay the temperature of the vaporizing chamber can be different for different vaporizers 47 degree for isofluorane isofluorane 37 for desfluorane and diva during our school times this was the impression and after getting into anesthesia the impression is this dragger direct injection of vapor anesthetic vaporizer so this is the uh, diva vaporizer you can see the bigger picture okay this is usually combined with our uh, new generation isis and uh, macquet isis uh, anesthesia workstation again the principle in nutshell is the same the direct injection of vapor anesthetic occurs at the near, near the fresh gas flow into the system so that a given amount calculated amount of anesthetic agent is joining the fresh gas outlet principles are almost same there is a heating chamber vaporizing chamber flow sensor and its software control or computer control which will dictate how much to inject how long to inject there is a dosing valve also one more thing is anaconda vaporizer this is anesthetic gas conservation type of uh, vaporizer which is actually less cumbersome look, looks like so that we can use it even inside the intensive care units it incorporates uh, evaporator or vaporizer the liquid anesthetic agent from the pump is getting into here there is a heated vaporizer the agent comes out there is an active carbon layer or reflector so this is the patient end so what happens is the liquid agent gets into the vapor phase and it's carried away by the air oxygen mixture and goes to the patient so when patient exhales what happens is the vapor gets absorbed to the active carbon layer so that it will conserve the anesthetic agents and uh, this hme with the activated active carbon layer actually conserves heat humidity along with the agent whether it is uh, fluorine or any other agent will be conserved to the maximum okay friends i think uh, i tried to keep up the timing i think it's still uh, almost 8:50 i wanted to finish in uh, 8:20 8:30 like that still it took a little bit more time anything else you want to clarify from whatever we have discussed i think there are still more topics to discuss my idea is to give an give you an idea how to approach when you are given a vaporizer in your exam viva okay mostly if you are given two equipments together try to compare property by property this is a flow over this is a injection type vaporizer like that property by property you compare and proceed to practice that first you have to ha practice with single equipment and practice along with the classification first and if you know further the inner working details then you volunteer otherwise if you uh, start memorizing everything in first go you won't get that flow so this is my method no hard and fast rules this is something which helps me personally i think um anything to add from our panelists dr jyoti dr bhagya dr sai balaji you are all muted there only one thing about uh, uh, filling of vaporizers during uh, when they are in use okay go ahead so for other vaporizers also we can uh, fill when they are use when they are in use right no is okay. ma manufacturers are not um, advocating you to because um only desfluorane there is a specific instruction that uh, you need not turn the vaporizer off so it's a good practice to turn the vaporizer off and fill 
and it's always better to make sure that during your first case machine checking you make sure that vaporizer is adequately filled so that you won't have to fill the vaporizer in between but between cases also if you do the check and fill the keep the uh, vaporizer filled this question doesn't come at all and it comes when only when you do long cases okay so desflurane that is a specific feature highlighted by the manufacturer you need not close down because it liquid goes to a different there is no contact between the carrier gas and uh, liquid agent and there is a o ring uh, rubber sealer yeah that is in the manifold connector no uh, o ring is basically yes. to make it air tight or gas tight to minimize the leak or to avoid the leak okay okay, okay sir thank you sir okay thank you dr bagya any closing remarks dr sai balaji thanks okay it's been an exhaustive topic but uh, i tried to pick up selected topics and present before you i think all the panelists were uh, very much cooperative active so uh, your participation like this uh, is very much encouraging okay so whatever uh, feedback you give will be appreciated fine uh dr anup shall we wind up this session okay dr anup is busy i think so uh, any any more clarification i'll check the chat box before i close yeah sure sure this, this uh, presentation i'll be Uh, sharing in the telegram group okay in uh, not only this all the webinar campus uh, sessions we are uh, giving uh, so somebody is telling some question is not answered okay fine i think i just um no desflurane is only for tech 6 okay injector vaporizer there is um, uh, thermo compensation is mostly by the supplied heat okay sure we'll be sharing all the uh, i think pulmonary embolism um, we uh, material will share in a day or two um, no worries because we'll make sure that at least by the end of the week um, we patch, uh, catch up with the um, work because this is actually our extra time work hmm? so we need to do our routine works and our webinar work we try our best to and get it done as early as possible because we can also wind up with the session and get along with the next session so next week uh, probably we'll be planning for a, a session on um, anesthesia machine i am planning to um, do demonstration on the boils machine but uh, before that i have to check the um, internet connection speed from my hospital i think it should be working yes case discussion we are planning but uh, because of the popular request i am accommodating these topics this vaporizer and anesthesia machine so um, after that we'll go into case discussion for case discussion definitely we need uh, more uh, um, participation from you volunteers to present cases then only we can get the proper utilization of the case discussion because case discussion we cannot have uh, three or four people taking the discussion together okay our telegram group details are uh, there in our uh, facebook page at webinar campus so the link is there now we cannot add uh, anybody into our uh, telegram group it's only through the invitation link which will be provided in the which is already there in on our uh, webinar campus at webinar campus facebook page okay i think um, we'll wind up for the day uh, happy weekend uh, thanks for your uh, patient listening so um, next session mostly um, next week onwards we'll be having anesthesia program on fridays rather than saturdays 
because next week onwards uh, we'll be settling into uh, probably a three day schedule like monday wednesday and friday so friday will be anesthesia pg program other two days we'll discuss uh, critical care acute medicine and general medicine topics uh, i think dr anub is busy so we'll wind up for the day thank you all uh, your panelists uh, who came along with me for this uh, nice discussion wish you all a happy sunday i think in india it's going to be a full lockdown sunday i believe i didn't listen to the news so anyway we have to get along with this covid season uh, wish you all a stay uh, safe time uh, stay home stay safe good night thank you